God who listens and who hears when they call. Thank you, Father, because I know you are credit worthy. You have been a good God to us. You have been a good God to this ministry. You have been a good God to me personally. I can testify of your love. I can testify of your grace. And I say that your people this morning will have a testimony on their lips. In Jesus' mighty name we're praying. And the people of God say a big amen. Amen, amen and amen. You may have your seat. If you are standing, God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So while I, I, I said something earlier, while in the course of the week, I struggled with the text to use for this message this morning. But I trust God that I will speak to you because I'm not bringing my words. I'm bringing God's word to you this morning. Hallelujah. If you are with me this morning, can you open your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 18? I want to appreciate the man of God for this opportunity. And I really celebrate him for giving us opportunity like this, you know. He has left his pulpit for us on Wednesdays. Any of the ministers bring the word and it's been a blessing back to, uh, back to back. I'm so grateful to God for this opportunity and I do not take it for granted. And I'm also, one thing I don't want to take from this, you know, this opportunity is that I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to God. Scripture says, who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I? I could, I could be on the street, but God chose to save me. Don't take your salvation for granted. Don't think that those that are not saved, they are No. God in his mercy saved you. And the same way he saved you, you need to save others. You have been called to save others. You are not called to just, you know, enjoy this Jesus alone. If you post on your status before things that are not edifying, things that don't speak about the gospel or speak about the Lord Jesus Christ, Today, I want you to repent and use your status. Use you, a lot of you have thousands of followers following you on Facebook, or on, on, on your WhatsApp alone. Not to talk of other social media and what are you using it for? I'm grateful for the opportunity, for the salvation of my soul. I'm grateful to Jesus. He's the lover of my soul. He's the one who has redeemed me. He's the one trans, who translated my life, who saved me. And change my story. I know God can change your own story too. Wherever you have come from, wherever you, from the backside of life that you thought that life kept you, God can change your story around. God can, God can turn your story around. And even you yourself, you will not be able to, you, you will be wondering, is this me? Is this not me? Is this Oluwafumilola? Is this, is this Deborah? Is this me? You will become a wonder. In the name of Jesus. Somebody can say better amen than that. I said today God will meet somebody in the name of Jesus. It is grace to be alive. Hallelujah. It is grace to be alive. So I want to use this scripture to pray, uh, to start as my opening text this morning. Romans chapter 8. I would love if it's projected. And if it's not, that's why we say come to, you know, church with your Bibles. Hallelujah. Can this one be projected? If not, I would try to use this. Please, let's do this together, people of God. Are we here? So we're going to um, read to the end. Please follow me. Hallelujah. It says, for I rep... Oh, I've not even given us a title. For the sake of title, let me give us one. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. Oh, don't stop. Whatever life throws at you, don't stop. Don't ever stop believing. What the enemy wants to do to you is to forget what you first believed. It's for you to, for, you know, when life throws, there's something pastor used to call curved balls. Oh, when life throws you a curved ball, you did not expect it. You never expected it. Or yours is a betrayer. Oh, somebody you love so dearly betrayed you and made you stop believing in people. Or you were hurt by that relationship or that person that you believed in so much. You've spent your entire life or spent your emotion 
in a particular direction and it did not yield the result or the fruit you expected. Oh, it's, it's painful. I can't tell you how to feel or how to express your pain, but I can help you on how to go through it. Never stop believing. What the enemy wants is for you to stop and say it's not working. That this Jesus that you believe, what has he fetched for you? You go to church morning, afternoon, night. Is he only you? You call Jesus, 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 Jesus. I beg, let us rest. What has that Jesus done for you? They don't know that your miracle is around the corner. Even you don't know that your miracle is around the corner. That moment when you are supposed to give in, God is so close. He's so close. He's so close. Can you only believe? Can you only believe and just stay at it? Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You've been looking in the wrong direction. You've been expecting so much from people. That's why they failed you. Can you just look unto Jesus this morning? Can you look up to him and focus on him and say, Lord, I believe you again. Lord, I believe you one more time. Hallelujah. And it's my prayer that God will come through for you in the name of Jesus. Somebody will say amen that is powerful because they believe that God is coming to them soon. It's so close, I believe. It's so close, I believe. It looks like that thing endures or has endured too long. Bible says if that sorrow, that pain, that tribulation endured for the night. But I say glory to God. Joy comes. Joy comes in the morning. Can you only believe? Can I help somebody to believe one more time? Joy is coming for you. I say your joy is coming again. Your joy is coming again. Can, you, can, you, can I help you? Can I help you find the flame of your believing? Can I help you to believe God one more time? Can I say to you that God will help me? God will brought me from the backside and brought me to the front. He's still on the throne and he will do yours for you in the name of Jesus. Those good things that you've envied in others. Those good things that you have seen in others. Those good things that you have seen God don't do for others. God today will come through for you in the name of Jesus. I say God will do it for you again. In the name of Jesus. You will never be put to shame. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I know what it is for God to help a man. And I can't, I can tell you a little. I might not know what you, where you've gone through or what you've gone through or what you are going through. But I know that there is joy in the morning. There is joy for you. Can you just believe God? Hallelujah. Let's read Romans 8, 18. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Media, thank you. People of God, let's do this together. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. So we're going to read this together and we're going to the end. I want you to follow this scripture. Hallelujah. It says, let's do this, church. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. Oh, whatever you are going through, whatever situation you are going through, it says that what you are going through cannot be compared to the glory that God is going to reveal in you. Can you just believe God? Verse 19, hallelujah. These scriptures are for you to be encouraged. Verse 19, hallelujah. Go, brady, shut up, but I have so so precate the bozo. Verse 19, okay. I think I'll open my Bible so that I'm not um, at the mercy of the screen. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Oh, I see God working miracles in this service. 
I see God healing somebody. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Okay, let me do message. You can follow with that. It says, that's why I don't think there's any, there's any comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. The created world itself can hardly wait for what's coming next. Everything in creation is being more or less held back. God reigns in it until both creation and all the creatures are ready and can be released at the same moment into the glorious times ahead. Meanwhile, the joyful anticipation deepens. All around us, we observe a pregnant creation. I want to do KJV. I don't know. I think that would sit well with what I want to say. Hallelujah. Just help me this morning. I'm walking by the Spirit of God. Amen. It says, for we know that the world, all creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Verse 23. And not only they, but also us, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we, us, we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to with the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. So be, because you feel that the things that you are experiencing is not the things that you've prayed for. So some of us don't believe until we see it. I need you to move to the realm of faith this morning. What does Bible call faith? Bible scholars. Faith is what? And the evidence of what? Hallelujah. He says, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is not seen is not hope. For what a man seeth. So why are you open when you see it? Oh. Can you just believe God? That what you prayed for. I know it's hard to tell you, believe. You know, it looks like a cliche. That, can you just believe again? You've heard it so much. Even motivational speakers have told you so many things that you feel that, can you guys just stop? Can I see the reality of what I'm saying? Don't give me bobo. I need to see. But scriptures is telling you that when you see it, then why are you open? Can you just believe God? Believing in unseen realities, that the things that you have not seen is coming to you because you believe God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Please help me. Don't, don't take the scriptures away because we're going to the end of that chapter. I want to encourage somebody this morning that whatever it is that you are going through, it's not the end. It's not, a, it's not even a definition of who you are. It's not your end. It is only a bend. There is a glorious future ahead of you which the enemy knows. Bible says if he knew he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If he knew that what you are going through is supposed to help you, toughen you up, make you stronger, he would not have brought it your way. He knows there's a, there's a glorious future ahead of you. That's why he's throwing those things at you. And scripture told us, he says he will not give you more than you can yes, bear. Yes. So what you are going through is your size. Yes, hey. So you're thinking that every other person is enjoying. Why are things happening to you differently from what you're praying about? Remember what I spoke to you the first Sunday when I br brought us the word? After praying, what do you say? Do you finish praying and say the opposite of what you just prayed about? Because you went outside and the opposite of the very thing that you prayed about is what you are seeing. Believe in unseen realities. Live in unseen. You know the funny thing is that when you don't walk by faith, it's even a sin. So, wherever you swing it, 
whatever pendulum you swing it. It says, if you don't walk by faith, you are in sin. So let me help you this morning. Can you just believe God one more time? Have faith. Have faith in your faith. Have faith. That God is coming through for me. That this is the reason why you can help others to come out of the same problem. He said that with the same problem, you will be able to comfort others who are going through the same ch challenges. For adventure, what you are going through is so that when you come out on the other side, you can preach to others that what you are going through does not limit how God is taking you. Can you just believe God that he's going to move you forward? God who did it for me is going to do it for you. God who brought me out is going to bring you out. God who changed my story is going to change your story. God who did, it, who did this for Sister Rom, okay? He's still on the throne. He will do it for Sister Lagbaja. If there is anybody like that. God is not a prayer storing box. He does what he says he would do, regardless of your being good. Hallelujah. God, is my prayer that God will be good to somebody this morning in the name of Jesus. That miracle, that breakthrough around the corner, you will not lose it in the name of Jesus. What the enemy wants is for you to lose focus. Say, I will not lose focus. I will keep believing. Can somebody convince themselves this morning? I will not lose focus. I Oluwafu Milola. I keep believing. And your faith will work for you in the name of Jesus. When life throws people things or curveballs, like I said, when life throws you on manner, pain, the death of a loved one, anything life throws at you, when life throws you something that you did not expect or you even expect, even life itself happens. When these things happen, there are different ways people respond to it. And please, don't be the judge or the jury of how people should go through their pain. You know, some people will come, they will say, how does it go now? Please, encourage them from the word. Don't say, this is how they should feel. A lot of people feel pain differently. Some withdraw. They withdraw to themselves. They, they don't know how to handle the pain. They withdraw. Others feel pain from their pain. They feel disappointed. Why would I do so much for you? And this is how you pay me. This is how you pay me. You can betray me. You this. And they become the judge and the jury. They start cursing. They start, you know, all manner of things in the bid to take revenge by themselves. Some other people worship. What do you do when pain is unbearable? When the pain is so much that you feel that, God, have you forgotten me? God, have you forsaken me? Even our Lord Jesus Christ on the, tr uh, on the cross say, Eli, Eli, ah, why did you forsake me? What do you do when the pain or the, the, the things that you expected, your expectation did not come through like you expected it? Today, let me bring you one thing you can do. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. He will give you peace to go through the pain. He will give you peace. He will give you direction on how to handle it. And I know that if you focus on him, the devil will leave you alone. Hallelujah. Because he will be wondering, this idiot, I, I did everything. I threw this at him. Even his mother betrayed him. Even his, this, this, everybody. But you stood on your ground. You focused your eye on your Jesus. That if, even if, even if he slays me, I will yet serve him. Even if he slays me, I will yet follow him. Would that be your testimony this morning? That you will keep believing God. Despite the words thrown at you. Despite everything that comes your way. Would you believe God again? Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Can we continue in that scripture that we're reading? Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Romans 8, okay, verse 24. It says, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. 
For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Verse 25. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Can you wait for it patiently? Can you just wait? Oh, I don't know how to encourage you to do this. To just wait. To just hold on. That that miracle, that blessing, that thing that you have been praying for, don't throw in the towel yet. Your miracle, your blessing, your breakthrough is around the corner. Can you just wait? Say, I will wait. I will wait. Say, I will wait. I, will wait. I said something earlier. I said when people are going through pain, don't be the judge. Don't be the jury. The same thing that you are praying God for, or what you got so easily, somebody, is somebody's prayer point. Oh, somebody did not hear that. Abraham was rich in cattle, was rich in many things, but he prayed for a child. This is a rich man that could say, okay, I want this, I want that, I want this child, I want this baby. Yours might not be a baby. Yours might be the money, the person, the other person you have. Don't berate anybody. The same God is rich unto all that call on, on his name. So don't ever feel that somebody is believing God for something that is beneath you. Why are you feeling like their own problem is not a problem? Because you, you have it. So because you have a job now, everybody has something they are believing God for. Everybody, even the rich, wants to be richer. Because why would we still keep looking for more money? The things that you think that you have is somebody's prayer point. So somebody is also believing God for what you have. Somebody is believing God that that shoe that you have, they should even have a fit. You, you are complaining that you've been wearing one shoe every day, every day, every day. Ah, Lord, I believed you for a new shoe. I believed you for, to buy that sneakers. I believed you. Somebody does not have a fit. They are trusting God. Lord, can you just heal me? Let me walk. Let me. Can you just believe God and help others believe? Believe God for the little things. Believe God for everything. And it will come through for you in the name of Jesus. I say God will come through for you in the name of Jesus. So whatever you got so easily, trust me, is somebody's prayer point. I pray that everything that you trust God for, he would grant unto you in this service in the name of Jesus. Maybe you didn't come for anything or you don't have any expectation, but for those who have an expectation, whatever it is that you are believing God for, is it marriage? Is it relationship? Is it that God will heal your heart from that pain? Anything that you are believing God for, no matter how little, is my prayer that today God will meet you in the name of Jesus. God will bring those things to pass for you quickly, speedily, more than you even imagine in the name of Jesus. Can you just believe God one more time? Hallelujah. So in closing, I'm going to be using the words of the scripture in the book of Hebrews to help us. To know what to do. Hallelujah. Romans chapter. Should I use my own Bible? Romans chapter 5. 5 verse 4. Or Romans chapter 16 verse 4. Let me speak in text. So the thing is that this part does not have two J's. Minister Dami, please let me get my phone. Hallelujah. Let me see. Amplify. Okay. Romans chapter 4, 5 verse 4. It says, an endurance. I'm using Amplify Classic. An endurance, fortitude, develops maturity of character. Approved faith and tried in integrity. And character of this sort produces the habit of joyful confidence, hope of eternal salvation. It says that endurance, endurance develops maturity of character. Whatever thing that you are going through, 
It says it developed maturity of character. It developed in you character to be able to wait patiently. It developed in you character that I want this antique and I want it now. I don't know who gets an antique now. It says it produces in us a maturity of character. May you mature and lacking nothing in the name of Jesus. You will mature today and you will receive your blessing that is around the corner for you in the name of Jesus. Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I need you to know who you are looking unto. I'm going to be using the book of Hebrews to help us. Three things that I, I believe the book of Hebrews was written by the writer, probably it's Paul, wrote it for those believers who are going through something or the other. That when you are going through trials, when you are going through something, just go to the book of Hebrews. You will find your own inside there. Hallelujah. Quickly, let's open the book, to the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Hebrews 10, 35. Hebrews 10, 35. Hallelujah. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. You see some, why it's good to have a Bible. Hallelujah. May the arm of flesh not fail us in Jesus' name. Scripture says, hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, I'll read to verse 39. It says, cast not away therefore your confidence. Cast not what? Your confidence. Which adds great recompense of reward. If you have confidence in the prayer that you pray, don't cast your, don't, don't wish it away. Don't say it's not going to work for me. It says, cast away not your confidence, which adds great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience. I said it earlier. We read it earlier. That you have need of patience. That after you have done all the will of God, you've done everything. You've prayed. You've prayed. You've fasted. You've done everything. You've chosen the right words. You've, done the, you've spoken words. You did everything they told you to do in church. He says, I've been done all to stand. After you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. He says, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come. Hallelujah. I want you to follow the scripture. He says, after a little while, he that shall come will come. He will come. He will not tarry. He will not take long. He that promised will come. He that promised you will come. Even though it looks like it's delaying, it says it's coming. Will the bride be waiting so long for the husband and the husband does not come? He says he that says that he will come. Even though it tarries, he will come. Can you keep your lamp burning? Can you keep it burning and wait for it? Now the just shall live by what? By faith. The just shall live by faith. Not by my faith. Not by pastor's faith. But by their faith. The just. Oluwafumilola. Olamide. Peace. What, whoever. He says the just shall live by his faith. Hallelujah. He says, if any man draw back. So that, that means that you don't have a choice. Just stay. It's, if ev any man, not some people, you know God will not say, ah, you, you can draw back, oh, because I know your faith is small. He says, if any man draws back, any man, oh, scripture is so complete. If any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. I will not be happy with you. If any man, it, it means that there was nothing to you in the first place. So what were you shouting, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus for? If any man draws back, he says there was nothing to you in the first place. He says he would not be happy with you. I believe every one of us here wants God to be happy with us. We want God to have pleasure in us, to take pleasure in us. He says, but we are not of them. You can put your name there. I, Oluwa from Lola, I'm not of them. I'm not of them who draw back. I'm not some, I'm not part of those who start and 
I'm, I don't even start something I don't finish. We stayed there. We are not dying there. We stayed there. And we achieved the result. Because scripture will just have to agree with us. Because we are walking by it. We stayed there. Until my change come. Yes. I will wait. Until my change come. I will wait. I will not draw back. I will not allow God not to be pleasure to have pleasure. Why would God not be happy with me? Ah, it's not good though. Just stay there. Lord, is you or you? You know when they tell you option A is this, option B is this. Our own option A is Jesus. B is Jesus. C is Jesus. D is what? All of the above. Because he says, my soul will not have pleasure with you. I want God to, have, to be happy with me. I want God to have pleasure in me. And he says, I'm not of them that draws, I will not draw back. Whether you like it, you know, I, 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 I don't want to preempt myself. One of the three things that you need to do, we're going to be reading it. And it's not, it's, in, in few minutes, I'll be done. I'll be out of your faces. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So he says, my soul will not have pleasure with you if you draw back. He says, but of the, he says, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving grace of the soul. You will not go back. In the name of Jesus. You will not go back. In the name of Jesus. You will, your believing will work for you. Your faith will produce for you all that you have asked God for. In the name of Jesus. I say your faith will work for you in the name of Jesus. So when you are going through challenge or any trial or tribulation, remember, God is on your side. God is on your side. Hebrews 12 verse 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing also we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside. Lay what? Aside. Every weight and the sin which, do, which does so easily beset us. The number one thing you should do when you are faced with any situation is that look at the cloud of witness. It says, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. Who are these witnesses? Hebrews 11. It says, by faith, this one did this. By faith, this one did this. By faith, this one. Just go there. Look for the one that relates to you. By faith, this one went through this and came out. By faith, this one went through this. Remember I said, by, in verse 12, the first thing to do is to look at the cloud of witnesses. Look around you. If the Bible is feeling like it's too large, who are those that are witnesses that have stayed or done things and waited and got their promise? They are cloud of your witness. The number two thing that I said in that scripture he says you should lay aside every weight. One of the weights is faithless people. Remember, church is like an hospital. In an hospital, it's not everybody that comes to the hospital that is responding to treatment. Though. Some people, I've even heard of stories. In a general hospital, the guy came, he's not feeling fine. And the doctor was attending to him. The doctor stood up to go and check something. The guy fapped the doctor's phone. As in, this is a sick person. So, on top of your sickness, you carried the pe So, just imagine a church. Everybody here. God forbid, we are coming to... Uh, 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 we are not sick. But imagine that this is an hospital. And everybody here. Do you think everybody's sickness is the same thing? Do you think everybody's expectation from the doctor is the same thing? Some people will feel that, doctor, you can, hey, attend. You can attend to those ones. My own situation is, is okay. You better shout, Lord, I'm here. Answer me. Don't be the onlooker in an hospital when others are receiving their own healing and you are looking. Ah, why is that one healed? Ah, a shoe has changed, though. Are you going to receive your own healing? Beware of, so when you are going through challenge, where I'm going to, or anything, or situation, or pain, or betrayal, or whatever, 
you are going through. Beware of faithless people. They will talk you down. What they do is that they are small-minded. When you give them your dream, they reduce it for you. So what you are feeling like you are betrayed or you are pained, is all more to them. It's like a walkover. They'll just say, ah, yesterday, 10 people betrayed me. Like, seriously, <laughs> is that an encouragement? <laughs> Where's the word of encouragement in that? Beware of faithless people. Encobrances. People who will not make you go far or will not let you go far. Please, drop them on the wayside. Drop them, like hot potato. Drop them. Not everybody that is in church is in church for the same reason you are in, in church for. Some people are here to just look. Some people are here to receive. Some people are here to take from the little strength that you have. They want to take it. So when you are sharing your pain, when you are sharing your heart, when you are sharing whatever is wrong with you, please beware of faithless people. People who don't believe will reduce your dream to their size. When you tell them, oh, I submitted a proposal for that contract. Okay, who are you that you are submitting? In fact, they, they just imagine that you can't amount to anything. Why are you telling them about? They have sized you up. In their own opinion, you can't amount to anything. So please don't tell them your dream. Don't tell people who don't have dream that you have dreamt. They will interpret it wrongly. I pray that every weight around you, every weight that is dragging you back, that is not making you move forward, today they drop off you in the name of Jesus. Whether they like it or not, they will drop. It might be a relationship that is not making you believe. You know there are some relationships that you know that this relationship, this ship has to capsize. Because <laughs> this ship cannot take us because the, all the guy sees is Oju Elegba or um, some places I know I cannot mention but you, you are seeing Banana Island and it's like you need to take it easy you need to do it small small how many people in your generation lived or has even passed out Milan Bridge. You, you are dream, dreaming of Banana Island. See how you are even calling Banana Island. People who live there, they call it, you know, they call Banana Island different. They don't believe. He does not or she does not believe. So she's looking at you with your present state. Because she does not have the foresight that there is a glorious future ahead of you. That whatever you are saying today is not just mere words. Is what's inspired by the Holy Spirit that you are more, that you are more than this. Than this does not mean that's the end to my life. There's more to me. So don't reduce me to the size of Uju Elegba. Don't reduce me to, you know, some people, when you invite them to some places, they are like, ah, I can't go there. I remember when we said we are coming to ICM, some people felt that we are doing too much. Ah, we're doing too much. Hallelujah. Do too much. If God, if God has enabled you. Hallelujah. Your capacity now or your size now is not your future. How can you just sum your whole life to what you are having in your pockets? That that is the entirety of your life. No. Believe God one more time. Believe God that I can be more. I'm going to be more. I'm going to be more. I am more than this. The Oluwa Fumilala that you see now is not me that you will see tomorrow. I am more. Glory to God. And God will come through for you. In the name of Jesus. So never share your dream with faithless, dreamless people. People who don't dream will interpret your dream wrongly. It's my prayer that you will choose your friends wisely. In the name of Jesus.
The last thing is focus on Jesus. I said it earlier. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. He's a good God. Trust him. Focus on Jesus. When life has sapped you of all your strength, come back to him. Bible says they go from strength to strength. Every one of them that appeared in Zion. Focus on Jesus. When you have lost strength, uh, when you have lost people, when you have, you've lost everything, don't look at everybody. Look on Jesus. Look on to Jesus. Look on to Jesus. He will come through for you. What do you do when your phone battery goes down? So go back to your source. Father, I'm back again. He's not tired. He's, he's not tired. I'm back again. In fact, I never left. Like seriously, I'm here, Lord Jesus. And I know you will come through for me. I know you will come through for us. I know somebody's story is about to change. I know somebody is about to receive their testimony. I know somebody is about to receive their miracle. I know somebody is about to go through and break through. When life is giving you a door, break it. Go through. Make success. Progress. Don't limit yourself by your thinking. Believe again. Believe again that if life is throwing you lemon, make lemonade. They've said it, yes, believe it. If life is throwing things at you, just know that God knows my size. He knows I have capacity. I have received strength today and I will go through life uh, winning, succeeding, and being victorious in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want to read this scripture to encourage somebody this morning. And you will sing this song. I hope you will know this one. Jehovah over you. Hey. You will dance. Remember, it's our month of Thanksgiving. And divine allocation. And I've given you the key, or one of the keys, to receive your own allocation. Today, when you are dancing, see yourself in that car. See yourself in that office. See yourself owning that business. See yourself carrying your baby. See yourself walking on the altar. Can you believe God this morning? Hallelujah. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Hallelujah. Praise Finally. Yay. After everything I've said. Finally. It's scripture. So don't think I'm saying. <laughs> Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. So it might look like, oh, Pastor Fumi spoke so beautifully, or some people are not even impressed. Thank you. I don't mind. <laughs> well, thank you anyways. But tomorrow, life will throw whatever to you. But scripture is telling us this morning that finally, after all this one, that this strange, this woman has said, whether bad English, good English, she has said something. Finally, be strong. Why is God telling you to be strong? He knows you can, tomorrow you can be weak. He knows that tomorrow that situation can slap you. And you're like, what this woman said, is it even working? Is it working? Is it working? Is it working? Is it working? Hallelujah. Finally, be strong, Olua Fumilola. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Not in Fumi, but in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. And in the power of his might. That God, I know you are able and capable to do it for me. He says, put on your whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We know the scripture. But against principalities, against, against powers, against rulers of darkness. But one thing you should hold on to is be strong in the Lord. I do not have my anchor in anything but in Jesus. Oh, Jesus, the lover of my soul. He has put me in places that I know that it is only God that can put a man here. And God is willing to do that for you and more. The Jehovah overdue. The Jehovah that is too much. 
the Jehovah that loves you so much, the Jehovah that will do you good, even with you, you know, being faithless. But today, he has brought his word to you to say, my daughter, my son, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. That I am mighty and capable to do that which you have asked me for. Even much more than you can ever ask, think, or imagine. Can you stand up on your feet and give God thanks this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's not a sober message.